Hey guys. So, Isling is selling for 12 divines right now. The Hillock crafts are 2 divines. The Scarabs are 2 for 1 divine. Burichi you can sell for 5. I'll explain that later. So, on average, you can get 17 divines every mastermind. And if you're fast, you can do about 5 per hour. So, that would be about 80 divines per hour. And another good thing about this is that you can do it on low tier maps. Like it doesn't matter, the tier doesn't matter. So you can do tier one maps if you want. So if you have like a bad build, you can do high end magic flying. You can do red maps. You can farm a lot of currency for from betrayal. And if you can do higher tiers, it's better. If you can do like tier six things, you're gonna get the the invitations. You're gonna get more chances for for more members. You're gonna get paradoxica. So it's, it's even a little bit better than the eighty. Um, possibly. Uh, let's get here. So I did about 20 hours of this. You can see here I have a bunch of flasks. I have some weapons. I have about 120 divines and scarabs. And I got 1250. So I got about 1500 in about 20 hours. So that was about 75 for me. I'll be showing how you can do that. How you can about the same results I had. Hopefully it's not gonna be too long, but there is a lot to talk about. The tier is it's kind of complex, it's very extensive. I'll try to cover everything you need to know. So I'm gonna start from the very beginning. If you have no idea how material works, it's gonna be good. If you know how it works, but you're not hundred percent sure, then it's gonna be good as well for you. Otherwise you can just skip ahead for the, the strategy section. So, okay, this is the betrayal board. Let me get my notes. So, the betrayal board has 14 members and another three members that are hidden. You can't see them. You can only get them by removing someone, and then one of the three hidden members is gonna take the place for for that one. It has four houses: transportation, fortification, research, and intervention. And it has a jail with three slots. So the members uh, belong to some house. Every every house needs to have at least one member. It's one, between one and four. And uh, it also has a experience bar here. You can see the transportation has 96. That's called uh, intelligence. And research is full on intelligence, so I can already run the safe house. Uh, once you go into the map, you're gonna have three encounters there. Usually you get intervention, one encounter, it's the guys that jump on you when you run the map. You're gonna have research, that's the small um, thing you go inside. You have fortification, that's the, the big round thing with people inside there. You have transportation, that's the one that... Um, Thing just runs around the map, and then let me show you here inside the map. So this uh, this was a transportation counter. You can see here I got got quarter. So when you do the encounter, it always gonna pull one member from that house. So I did transportation. It pulled Coral because he is from transportation. And then that member can pull between one and another three members, so the max is four members per encounter. Higher tiers gives you higher chance of more members. So if you're doing tier one, you're probably not gonna find four members. And tier 16, it's more likely to get four members. And you can only pull members that have no houses. So you can see here that ITF, Janus, Vegan, and Leo, they have no houses. So they are eligible for being pulled. And this man, like Tora and Isaac, cannot be pulled unless they were friendly. But I'm not gonna talk about friendly because it's not it's not important for for this strategy. So the actions you're gonna take here are gonna impact how much uh, intelligence you're gonna get, and they're gonna dictate where your members are gonna be at. So depending on what you do here, you can see I have three options. Uh, depending on what I do, I can get intelligence, 
I can shift the members around, I can get them from one house to the other, or I can make them have no house. And uh, the option on the left is always gonna be interrogate. It's always gonna be jiggling. Well, what interrogate does is send them to the jail. And it's gonna give you intelligence for the house of the encounter that you're in. So because I'm on a transportation, I'm always going to have intelligence for transportation, even if the member is not from transportation. So you can see Leo is not affiliated with any house, but if I imprison him, I'm going to get transportation intelligence. Okay, what else? Right. The right option is going to depend on how many members you have on the encounter. So you can see here I have three members on the ground. So the right options when you have three or four members is always gonna be plus rank execute. And because I have the the passive here, uh, what is that one? This one? Yeah, this one. Because of that I always get plus one rank. So if I did execute, it would become a two rank. Each member has between one and three ranks. That's um, shown by the star number on the top left. You can see Toda has two ranks, Eileen has one rank, Intervention, Koda has one rank. These members have no rank, so they have no house. Let's see what else. Okay, so if you have three or four, you're always gonna get the plus rank, and if you have two members, that's gonna depend on the relationship between them. So. If one member is from one house and the other member is free, it's also going to be plus one rank. If they are both from the same house but they are not allies, it's also going to be plus one rank. If one member is the leader, it's never going to be plus one rank. It's usually going to be plus 28 intel and become rivals, or it's going to be removal, or it's going to be plus 44 intel, I believe. But never plus one rank, so you gotta consider that when you have. Uh, multiple members in the encounter and if you only have one member let me show you here so this is always going to be plus one so right now it's also going to be plus one I can plus one Koro or Janus and the important thing about that is that if you want to plus one rank someone you gotta do it before talking to the other so if I want to plus one rank um, let's say Koro here I want to do it first and then talk to Janus because if I do like Jail Janus, for instance, now I cannot plus one Koro anymore. I'm gonna have a different option for that. And the options for one member usually you're gonna have stuff like drop a scarab, drop a map, drop a currency items. The important options are gonna be remove from the syndicate. You're always gonna pick that if you have not found Isling yet. And there is another option. It's not an important option. But usually is removal. Um, intelligence set free is also an option. You pretty much never gonna hit that. I'll explain that later. Oh, and there's also an option for okay, if there's one member and your house does not have more than four members, there is a chance for pulling one member that's unaffiliated into this house. So because they only have Cordo here. There is a chance that I'll have an option to get Vagan or ITF in transportation. So you might want to consider that when you're thinking about um, your order of talking to the members. Let's see what else. Okay, so once your intelligence hits 100%, you can go inside the master, inside the, the safe house. You can see here, I can go inside research and in there. Um, okay, each member has a reward based on which house he's in, right? So, for instance, here I have Toda and Isling in Intervention. They would be giving me Scarabs in Intervention. So, if I ran Intervention right now, I could get the 2-star Toda reward for Intervention or the Isling 1 reward for Intervention. But, if they were in a different house, I'd get a different reward. So if I did intervention for Isling with one, I would get a rusted, um, what's the one? 
the I forgot the name ultimatum. I would get a rusted ultimatum, and thought it would give me a polished harbinger. But if I did Isling in research, I would be getting a veiled orb and not a, a scarab. You can you can look up a, a table for rewards, but for the purposes of this strategy, the only ones you're gonna care about is Isling in research, Killock pretty much anywhere. And Vorichi in research. So Vorichi in research is gonna give you white sockets. You can sell it if you, on TFT, or you can use that on Pariahs. The you can buy a Pariah for about 40. Uh, right now you can buy it for 40, and you can sell it for 46. So that's six divine profit, and that's for any uh, tier. So Vorichi one will give you one to two sockets, and Vorichi four will give you one to six. You can sell the 4 on TFT if you want, or you can use on the Pariah. You can use on the this one as well. I think there are other uniques where the white sockets matter, so you can look that up if you want. Let's see here. Alright. Alright, it's a bit scuffed because I'm, I'm trying to look up my, my script here. Right, the stars. So. Each member can have one between one and three stars, and that's going to dictate the strength of the reward. But if you do it on the mastermind, that's going to upgrade the reward by one tier. The mastermind basically uh, is like you're doing all four at the same time. So you're going to get all the rewards of everyone that has an affiliation with a house when you run the mastermind. And there is a special reward there that's a four star reward. It's when you have a 3 star member and then you get the reward from the mastermind, it's going to become a 4 star. So Eiling uh, 4 star is the bench, it's the one that gives you, you can sell for 12 divines, it's the remove a mod and add a veil mod uh, craft. Let's see, okay. So the strategy is basically, you want to get Eiling inside research, we have rank 3. And you want to get 100% mastermind, so you run the mastermind and then you sell your Iceland bench on TFT for 12 divines. You can also get some other complementary stuff. You can get Hillock. Hillock on research will give you flask quality, armor quality on fortification, and weapon quality on transportation. They're pretty much the same value right now, it's about two, uh, two divines. And for interve intervention, you can get a 4 star reward that's going to be a winged scarab. Any member is going to give you a winged scarab, depends on which, uh, which scarab is going to depend on the member. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, Eldeon gives you the Reliquary and Hilok gives you the Abyss. You can just get any member, just don't get Guff. Guff does not give a, a scarab. So any member that's not Guff in intervention is good. Tier 3 will give you a winged if you get from the mastermind. Uh, okay, so I want to talk about the sextant now. This sextant right here, very important. So you can read here, it gives 100% increased intelligence. That means that it means it doubles the intelligence, obviously. But this sextant double dips. That means it gives you. 200% on the second map. So if you do a map, let's say I did a map right now and I got intervention and I jail Isling, right? I would get three experience per turn normally. If the sextant is gonna be six per turn. But if I left the map and I opened another map, that would double again and I'll get 12 per turn for the one star. That's very important for two, mainly for two reasons. The first reason is that if you have zero intelligence and you have a three star member and you have the sextant, you're gonna go up to 100 by one jailing, just by that one member alone. And the second reason is that sometimes you're jailing people and you don't wanna close the safe house, you don't wanna get 100%. But because you're reading the sextant as giving you like 60 and you think that's not gonna close, but it is gonna close because it's actually, it's like 90. It's between 
180 and 120 depending on the how many encounters you do per it's more than you would think it is so you gotta consider that when you're when you're drilling people with the sextant uh, the second thing is about over jailing so the jail has three slots right if your jail is full and you jail someone else the the first member you jail the is gonna be let out and you're gonna lose the, the intelligence you would have gotten from that member so do i still have a thing here let me see here okay let me go back so you can see my jail is full right now if I did, let's say, intervention and I jail Torda, Ring would be left out. So this uh, three transportation here, I would lose that. It would be it would be going to the limbo. I would not get it. That is important if the the member you're going to be losing is one giving you mastermind intelligence, because that one's harder to acquire. So just be careful. Uh, if you have a full jail and you're gonna jail someone, just look which one's gonna be let out and if you need that intelligence, then don't jail the, the person let's see oh, conversely, if you do not want to have the intelligence, you can over jail by intention so, let's say you have uh, you have you have uh, intervention that's not full yet and you do not want to close it and you have members giving you intervention then you might just want to jail a bunch of people so you can free up uh, someone and you don't close the, the intervention there uh, okay so about uh, I haven't talked about it yet I guess I'll talk it now so when you do the the safe house, you're always gonna be jailing the leader, and that leader is gonna be giving you mastermind intelligence. Normally, when you jail someone, that person is gonna be losing one rank. So if I jailed Isling right now, she would lose the the one star here. She would go she would go free. But if you jail the leader, he does not lose his ranks. So if I did intervention right now and I jailed someone here and he had two stars, he would still belong to intervention with two stars. That is important if you're jailing, let's say, Isling, she's leading somewhere and you jail her, she's still gonna belong there and she's still gonna have two stars. So I'm gonna have to jail her two more times so she can go free. Another thing is about uh, leader, leader member pool. So, the by rule, there always needs to be a leader in every house, and there always needs to be a member, at least one member, in every house as well. So, once you jail the leader, the game is gonna pick up a random person to become the new leader. So, if I jail the, the intervention leader right now, then Tora and Isling would become unassigned, they would have no house, and then there would be a pool between Tora, Isling, Vegan, and ITF, and they would have equal chances of becoming the new leader. And that's the same uh, same idea goes for the member. So you can see here in fortification I have one person. If I jail that person, then Vegan or ITF are gonna become the new member of fortification as soon as I start a fortification encounter that is both of those things should I talk about now or later actually mm, I guess I'll talk about it now so I have an example here let's see okay scuff time let me find the example so this one uh, give me one second here. We we'll do it live. Not that one. Not that one. Okay, that one. All right. 
So you can see here, Isling is not uh, in any house, right? And I want her to be in research. And I still don't have the mastermind experience. So I could open transportation or fortification to get that experience. But I would have a one in five chances of Isling becoming the new leader and should be trapped there. That would be bad because then I'll have to close the house again and open the house again so I can have Isling free so I can put him. So that would be a lot of work. So in this situation, I do not want to open any safe houses. I want to keep playing until I get Hillock, uh, until I get research and I get Isling inside research. Or another thing you can do here is, uh, let's say if you find Isling in intervention, you can jail her and now she's not, she will not be eligible for becoming the new leader. She will be safe from that. So if you jail Isling here, you can run the, the safe houses safely with no chance of Eileen becoming the new leader. And let's see here. Okay, another thing I like to do... Let's go back here. Usually I like to leave only one member in research. That is for two reasons. The first reason is that I can use the, the rule that there needs to be a member to increase my chances of getting the Isling in there. So let's say if, if ITF was Isling, I could jail this, this question mark here and there would be a 50-50 chance of ITF becoming the new research member. And you can use that, even if the member has two stars, you can still do that. He's, he's still gonna belong in the encounter, but because he's giving intelligence, he cannot come out. So a new member will be forced inside the research and you have two members there. Okay, let's see. Okay, next is gonna be encounter skipping. So, not every map you're gonna want to do every encounter. Let's say you already finished your research, right? You have your your Isling 3 in there, you have your Vodich in there, you have some XP. You don't need to run the research anymore. There's no reason to run it. You're not gonna get anything from there. So in that situation, you can just start not running the, the research. Just do your, your trans or your fort, your int, and you can leave the map. Usually when that happens is because you still need your mastermind. So you, you just don't run research anymore. Another situation could be... What is the other situation? Oh, there is another situation where you don't want to run um, every encounter. You, like one house is already done, so you, you don't need to run it. But the other situation is if, if you have Isling, if you don't have Isling in research at level 3, like she's free or she's only one star, and you already have your mastermind. So you only need your research, right? So you only run your research. You go into the map, you go into the research, try to get Isling. If you don't get it, just leave the map, open the new map, and repeat. You don't have to run the other ones. You're just gonna waste like one minute, or not one minute, like 30 seconds every map. There's no reason for that. Uh, another thing is forcing your, your encounter here. Let's say, What's a good situation, for example, here? Let's say you have Isling on... Let's say Isling was the leader of fortification and you, you dropped her and now she's a member with two stars. So now you gotta drop her two times again so she can go unassigned. But there is a 50-50 chance, right? You, you can be fort or you can be transportation on every map. So what you can do here is you can close your transportation you jail someone and you can fill up your your intelligence bar here and then it's always gonna be fortification in that, in that case and even a little bit further you can go into the map do only the fortification counter and leave the map right away the reason for that is because once the safe house closes it's gonna take four turns for the safe house to open again so you can do four encounters. Uh, if you do it that way, you can do four encounters of fortification before the transportation opens again. 
Okay. So, when you're doing this, and the reason why people take a lot longer usually to finish up their safe house, the, their masterminds, is because you're basically doing two things at the same time. You're doing, you're getting your Isling into research with tier 3, and you're also getting your mastermind to 100%. And you want to do both of those things at the same time. You don't want to do one and then the other. And you want to do both in a way that one does not hinder the other. Ideally, one will be helping the other thing you're doing. Uh, and to do that, I'll be explaining that in a little bit here. I'm going to be explaining first the, the Isling part. And the intelligence part is just going to click into place once you get the the island part let me get the initial board here all right so this is your initial board that's how it usually looks like every member is a question mark you don't know who they are and then the first step is going to be identifying every single member that is not a leader that's very easy. All you have to do here is you, you do not want to run the, the experience sextant because you, do not, you don't want to close the houses yet. So you just go into the map, you jail every single person you find until everyone's revealed. And the reason for that is because once you jail someone, uh, once you find someone, the, the question mark is you're going to find out who they are. It's not going to be a question mark anymore. So you jail everyone, so one random question mark is gonna be forced into that house. So if you do if you do like intervention and the question mark was Tata, you can jail her and one of the other four question marks is gonna become the new member from intervention. So the next map, you're gonna figure out who another question mark is by force. If you don't jail Tata, the next map, you're just gonna find Tata again and you're still gonna have question marks in there. And another reason is because you can see here uh, when the board resets, the, it, you can have one or two members on, on each house. You can see here transportation have two members, fortification have two members, and research have only one member, and intervention have only one member. So you want to figure out who all of them are. So you want to jail the transportation guy. So the next transportation encounter, you're going to see who the other transportation member is. So usually you can find out who every single member is in about two maps. If you're unlucky, it could take three or longer, but usually the first or the second map will be enough to figure out who all the, the non-leader members are. And most of the time, Arling Isling is gonna be one of them. If she's not, she might be the leader or she might be off the board. So, in case she is a member of a, a house, all you have to do is just jail her so she can lose the a member of a house that's not research. So you jail her so she loses the stars, she loses the affiliation with that house, and then you can find her in research and upgrade her there into research. The other case is she is not a member of any house, that's also very easy, you just find her in research and upgrade her there. And the other case, if she's, the, if she's the leader of a house that is not researched, so transportation, fortification, or intervention. In that case, usually you're gonna find that out by just running the houses. Um, once you find out all the, the non-leaders, and I think it's not one of them, you're gonna be looking for the, the leaders, because she might be one of them. And if she is, she's not gonna lose the stars, right? So she's, uh, let's say if she's the leader of transportation, you're gonna run transportation, jail her, and she's gonna be a transportation member of two stars. So you gotta run two transportations and jail her two times so she will be free. And while you're doing that, you do not wanna upgrade anyone into transportation because you wanna guarantee that Eileen is gonna be the member you're gonna find there. If she's, if she's in research as a member, you just upgrade. And if she's a leader, you have you have the option of upgrading her 
and you also have the option of just running the house because she's gonna be guaranteed to still be a member of research after you run the house. So if you still need Mastermind and Isling is the leader, you can run the house to get the, the Mastermind XP. And the last case, if she is off the board, that is very rare, it's a uh, 1 in 14. But when it does happen, the best, uh, most efficient way to do it is just run the, the Mastermind as soon as possible, so you reset the board and try again. And while you're doing that, you're going to be taking every single remove option you find. If you haven't found idling yet, or even if you haven't found like a hillock yet, so you can um, try to get idling there. And then for the second thing is the intelligence. Now this part is very easy, like I said before, if you have the sexton and you have a 3 star member, you can just jail that and close up the house. And if everything went right, there was not, nothing weird going on, you should have only one member on every house, right? Transport and int. So all you have to do is just do not upgrade anyone into that house, so you have only one member, and then you upgrade that member to rank 3, just upgrade once, you're gonna be going from 1 to 3, and the next map you jail that member, and then the next map you're gonna be getting the, the XP you need, so if the house is at 0%, you the first map you upgrade, the second map you jail, and the third map you get XP. So it should only take 3 maps to get the, the safe house. And you only need 2 safe houses because each one is going to be giving you 60% with the sexton. So usually I like to do intervention and another one between either transportation or fortification. But that depends on the, the board. Sometimes I like to do research. Sometimes, like if I have a good intervention going on, I just do transportation and fortification. Sometimes I have idling as leader and I run research. Usually it depends, but most of the time I like to do one that's either trends or fort, and the, the other one would be intervention. Uh, Alright, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know. I'm gonna be commentating um, five runs I did. It was about one hour. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. It should be only like uh, 20 minutes maybe. I'm only gonna be going over the... my choices. Whoops, let's find it here. That's me, what is this thing here? My right, one second. What? Okay, it was here. Start over. Okay, one sec. We do it live. Okay, here. Alright, let's go. So this is the beginning. We have nothing. And hopefully we'll have something soon. And we start without the sexton, because you want to do the, 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 the jailing and not closing the houses. So the first one here, like I said, I'm just jailing everyone. Uh, what happened here? Yeah, so I found the log here in intervention. I think probably just jail here. Yeah, I'm thinking about upgrading the log. I go for that. Upgrade again. So here, because I already found out every single a uh, member that's not inside the house, I don't need to jail anymore. You can see here I have two members in friends, two members in fort, one in research, and no members that have no house, so I don't have to find out who they are anymore. So I can just start building up my intervention, or I can close up the intervention. Yeah, I just drop here, yep. So here I'm probably gonna probably interrogate here just to get some more XP. I'm thinking about which experience I'm gonna lose here. To realize that it's okay to lose the, the research XP and I drop. 
Next map. Probably going to interrogate here just to get some XP. Here, one thing uh, you can see here, I have the option to become trusted. The reason why you look at that option is because it's gonna tell you where the member is. Like you can see here, Haku is gonna be giving me research intelligence. So now I know that one of those two question marks is gonna be Haku. So it could be the leader or the member inside. So I could take the option to find out which one it is. Or I could just commit that to memory and like if I do, let's say if I run research right now and the Haku is not the leader, then I know that the question mark is Haku. That's why I'm reading the, the option there. Okay, so here I'm just gonna run intervention so I can get some mastermind experience. I don't run the risk of trapping Isling because I haven't found it yet and I'm still looking for it. So we run it. And then now I'm running research so I can still looking for the, the Isling. And there is the Haku. He was leading and the other member. Uh, you can see who the other member is by the layout. Like you can see here, that's gonna take a while for you to memorize. But by looking at the layout of the, the reward room, you can know which member that is. And I know that's not Isling. So I keep going here, just looking for Isling. So here I'm probably gonna interrogate Gravicus so I can find who the other question mark is inside transportation. I'm thinking about how much experience I'm gonna get because the houses might close depending on how much experience I get. I'm releasing because I do not want to lose the mastermind experience by jailing and getting Haku out. This is uh, another thing. Uh, the option here to remove the to release of prisoners, it does not account for the sextant. So you can see here it gives me a 60 mastermind experience, but I could get is it 60? It's 40, right? I can I can read. So it gives me 40 mastermind experience, but if I have the Saxon, it's gonna give me 80. So bargaining when you have the Saxon basically gives you half the experience. So you pretty much never wanna bargain to release all prisoners. And just as I say that, that's it. So here, I realize I already have the as much mastermind as I need. So it doesn't really matter. I could have released, that would have been fine. And bargaining is okay as well because I don't need the extra mastermind because I'm gonna get it from the the fortification. So now I run fortification, try to find Iceland still. Now you can see here that's Georgian as the, the sub member for the, the reward layout. So I don't even run the house because I don't need to. Saves like 5 seconds. And now I believe I have transportation here. Yeah, I have two more chances of finding the Isling. I know the leader of uh, fortif the fortification is uh, not Isling. So I run trends now, Camiria, and the leader is Vodici, the, the member is Vodici, you can see there by the layout. So I already identified every single member and there was no Isling. Yeah, you can see here, I know both of those question marks are not Isling. So now I'm just going to run the house, uh, run the mastermind and reset the board. Yep. So I run that, I think I had like a, maybe one scab or two, and start over. So start here, I already find the Isling, 
right away you can see her she's in transportation i'm just gonna interrogate so she can go free upgrade first always the reason for that is because as true stars you're gonna be getting a little bit more experience once you jail the the george in there and if i had not upgraded him i would have a only a one star member in transportation so it's a little bit of a uh, more experience doing it that way and there i got very lucky i got the the swap there for research but if i did not i would just jail and let her go free so now that i already have isling I can start building up my my intervention, maybe get some healock in transportation, getting some uh, mastermind experience. I get a lot of freedom now that Isling is already in place. Now I'm just trying to upgrade her. I think I get it right away. Yeah, I got it right away. That was pretty lucky. Uh, only two maps for the, the placing there. Now I pretty much just need experience, I start using the sextant. So I got Vorichi here, now I have an option, I can uh, jail Vorichi and run the the safe house. I can also upgrade Isling. Isling's already 3, so probably what I'm gonna do here is gonna be... Probably jail for Richie so I can get XP and because Isling is rank 3 she's gonna be upgraded to research as a leader and then once I run it she's gonna still be the the rank 3 leader, the rank 3 member. Thinking about it, that's what I do. So now I'm gonna have to think about which uh, experience I'm gonna lose here. I see I lose intervention, that's fine. So here I probably start building up, just upgrade everyone inside into intervention so I can get some scarabs. Upgrade ITF, release here, because I cannot do anything else. I get the option for Haku there. Sometimes you get that option and that's one way to get your eyes in place or get some people into intervention. So I take that. Probably gonna jail here, decide to upgrade. It's also a move. I'm just trying to get the experience faster. In here, uh, there are two options here. You can upgrade Riker and hope you find Riker next turn. Or you can jail Riker and then upgrade the whichever member is going to be left in fortification. So it's, it's probably better to upgrade because I am, I am going to be running a 50-50 on finding Riker next turn. And if I jail, I'm guaranteed to find a one rank member. So that is the, the best option here. And then I just jail. I do not want to upgrade because I want to find Riker. Because he's three stars and it's going to give me more intelligence. And I run it, just for the experience. I also have the Vorichi there, so I can do the Pariah Ring here, or the Helmet. So I run the safe house. I do a Pariah there. the Vorich so I can get more so you can see here Eileen is in jail but she still belongs to research and she's still rank 3 and because she was in jail then Haku was forced into the house it could have been Vorichi and then I fight Vorichi I can upgrade him here and I can jail Haku for some XP that is the choice and because Leo was friends with Haku, I chose that before to find out if uh, if Haku was the Haku was a question mark, and I got the the friend option, so I took that to find out if he was Isling. And because they are friends, there was a chance for for Leo to be to be pulled into the encounter, and he was pulled because normally you do not get a person that belongs to a different house into the encounter 
So here, because let me go back a little bit. Uh, yeah. Because uh, Erdion's leader, I do not have the option to upgrade Leo. Normally, you would have that, but you do not do not have the option between leader and member. But you do have, I forgot to talk about that, you do have that option when it's a uh, leader. The leader always have the option to plus one. The member never does that when it's a uh, leader plus member. So I upgrade Eldion and I release Leo, of course. Uh, yep. Probably gonna interrogate here for experience. And interrogate again. More experience. Yep. Uh, one thing to notice here. So you can see here I'm interrogating the Chimera that's gonna force George Georgian to become the new leader because he's the highest member in the in the house. And then I have the option to jailing Georging again, jailing the leader again, and then the question mark is going to become the new leader. But the question mark only is going to have one star, so it is going to be is going to be giving less mastermind experience. It is only, I believe it is four base per turn. But because I already have 94, I can do that, and I can run the the one star one star leader and that would be enough for the mastermind experience because otherwise if I only had 60 I would not be jailing Georgian I'll be running him as the leader to get enough mastermind experience yeah, you can see here the guff is only one star but that is enough That's pretty much it, I believe. Now we just run here, jail, that'll be enough experience next turn. And I run the mastermind. I guess I'll show you the board here. There. I got the Varichi, the, the Isling, and one, two, three, four scarabs. Isling and Varichi. So that's a 16 divine board. Plus the, the mastermind drop. I can skip here. So, go next. So here, this is something I sometimes do. You can start with the the research completed. It's a move. I don't. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. It is a bit risky. You can do it if you want, because. Uh, once you run the house, that's gonna be a question mark as the leader, and you might have to run it again if you if you don't find Isling. But because it is research, it is a lot easier to complete. So you can do that. You can also not do that if you don't want. So I have Haku and Rin, I believe. There's another thing you can do here. Once you do... Let me show you here. I believe that is Rin as the, the soup member. Let's see if I read here. Yeah, that is Rin. So when I'm jailing here, I can keep an eye out to see who the question mark pulled is gonna be. So if I see that the soup member becomes the new leader, then I already know that Rin is the leader, so I don't have to run research again. And I noticed he was not the, the suit member, so I might have to run research again. So, fine here, probably gonna upgrade Hilok here, just for the, the flask craft later. And interrogate. So I can find out who the, the other question marks are. 
target again, probably. I'm looking at the... I'm gonna lose Mastermind experience here. But you can see here, I already have 40. And once you jail someone with 2 stars, it's gonna give you 60. So I can't afford to lose the, the... The 20 that I would get from Haku. So I do go for the jail. And Joanna's upgrade, I already have, I already identified everyone that's not in the house, so I can just upgrade here for the experience next turn. Probably gonna mm, interrogate probably better, just so I can see who the other one is here. Yep. And here, I'm probably gonna start building up the intervention board. Because I already identified everyone. So here I can see I can have Haku giving research. So now I know. Okay, Haku is not actually the leader. I, I was gonna say I know who the leader is, but Haku is not, it's just a member. So it doesn't actually give me any information there. So this is probably a good option. Uh, if I take the, the transportation here, the, the price is the same, you can sell the the weapon craft for the same as the flask. And if I take the move here, I can um, I can jail Janus later, because I don't want to jail Hilok right now. I'm thinking about it, I decide to not go for that. I think... Okay, that's fair as well. I go for the, the jailing so I can close the research. Probably just trying to get Isling by any means necessary. That he's gonna close research with the sextant here. Closing fort there. Now I see that Georgian is the leader of intervention, so I might not want to run intervention anymore. And I can also start building up my board here. Upgrade everyone, upgrade Georgian. Get some free XP. So I have three more chances here, three leaders that I haven't found out yet. And just running, trying to find it. I find it, it was the leader of research. So she's still gonna be in research as rank one. Now I just gotta find her there. One thing to notice here, you can see she has three turns left. So I do not wanna start uh, I do not want to go research into the first encounter because if I do on the first encounter then one of the the three members is going to be pulled into research and I want that member to be uh, the, I want the member in the encounter to be Isling so I want to do research as the last encounter on the next map getting my XP here In. So you can see here that um, Riker was put into research. I'm not sure why that happened. That must have been like a very special case. Usually the member only gets pulled once the encounter starts, but you can see Riker was pulled on the first encounter. I'm not sure why, but that's what happened there. And I got a lock into the fortification for the armor craft there. Now I'm just building up some more scarabs here. So this is interesting. This is a... Um, let me go back to it. So you can see I have the option to go grab 3 or to upgrade Haku. If you think you're gonna take a few more maps to complete the, the board, you wanna go Haku because you're gonna get more scarabs but because I thought I was gonna finish the 
the board in one or two maps, I would not have enough time for the the Haku here. So I just took the Gravicus because he's just faster. Because otherwise, I might end up with two Gilded instead of zero, instead of two Winged. This will guarantee at least one Winged. So I go here. And because Riker was pulled on the last encounter, I don't know why. That's the one that starts here, so I do not get the Isling. So I interrogate so I can guarantee the Isling next map. Release, release. So next map, I'm probably gonna find Isling in research and upgrade her. And should be the last map of the, the run here. I was trying to dodge the, the fortification because I, I only need, at this point, I only need the research encounter. But it was right next to it, so it activated anyway. Please. Now I'm hoping I get Isling and one more member here so I can upgrade her. I got it. That's GG. What you see here is gonna be Hilok on armor, Isling, and one, two, three scarabs. So that is 16.5 divines here. Now I can just run it. And go next. Basically, same thing, just jail everyone, until we can get everyone identified. Jail here, I'm looking at the experience. Um, let's see this one again. Okay, so here, I probably should have jailed here. What I was thinking here was probably that I was gonna find out who the other two are in the next encounter or two and I started to build up my intervention board but the right move here is actually to just interrogate so this is probably a mistake there I should... okay what was that? usually I would have a uh, Geode Riker here oh that was a... Uh, you can see here, greens give me fortification, but I don't know if it's she's in the leader or the member position. So I go for the bargain here, so I can s find out if she's leading. And she's not leading, she's just a member. Cheo here. Gotta remove uh, just to see if I can get some Isling because I don't have I haven't found it yet. Probably upgrade here. Just really looking for the Isling there, I guess. So here, probably jail here, just so I can close the research house. Yep. So now I found out who everyone is that's not in the house. So I can start running the safe houses to find if the leader is Isling or not. Try to remove. 
move. So I can run. Let me go back one second. So usually, sometimes there's an order to this. In here, it doesn't matter which one I'm gonna open first. Sometimes you wanna open one or the other first because once you open a safe house, the members are gonna be free and they will be eligible to go for the, the other safe house you're gonna open. So if I had Isling in research for instance, I would want to run intervention first and then research because if I run research and Isling is free and then I run intervention, then Isling might go into intervention. In here, it doesn't really matter which order I do this. Kagan and Toda. Uh, I'm not sure if I know which... Uh, I don't think I know which one the intervention the question mark is at. Run the his so I might not want to run intervention here, and I don't do it because I don't want to run the risk of of getting the question mark as a leader. So I just keep going here. That is the right choice. I don't want to risk getting the question mark as a leader. And I found it. There she is. She that was from the remove that I got earlier. So she was off the board initially, and then I removed someone, and she went into the board. So upgrade, and I wanna interrogate Leo here, so I can guarantee that Eileen is gonna be on the encounter next map. Upgrade. From my XP, probably. I'm seeing that I'm gonna be losing transportation, which is fine, but I still probably should upgrade here. Great. Mm. Actually, give six, right? Yeah, if I jail, actually, I'm gonna close fortification by jailing here, so that's probably the best option. Yeah, that's probably a mistake, I think. Although I do have intervention, right? Oh, that's why I did it. Because I can run intervention and that will be enough experience. So that is the best option, I suppose. I could also have ran fortification and kept my Carmelia 3 for the scale up there. But she's still gonna be three as a as a member, so it doesn't really matter. So that'd be enough experience. Get the gilded, I guess. The Iceland. Now I just gotta do one more encounter so the, the turn passes and I get the mastermind experience. One gilded there. I can just leave the map. Uh, yep. No need to do the last encounter. And then run it. This is only one Iceland and one Scarab. Uh, I could have kept going, going for the Vodichi, going for some more Scarabs. Usually I just get the Isling and cash out. You can choose that based on uh, whichever you think is better. So new run. I think it's going to be the last one. And interrogate. Same as always, just interrogate everyone. Interrogate Richie. 
here I could have not done that so I could have upgraded probably I should have um, yeah upgrading is probably better because I can still have the option of jailing him next turn and getting more XP and if I don't get him I'll just get the the question mark so I think in, I think upgrading was the best option here. So that was a small, mis small mistake there. And the last one. Yeah, just interrogate here. Mm. Not sure why I chose that. Yeah, that was also a mistake. I should have just interrogated here. Just those small things, like small little mistakes can cost you like a map or two, and if you do a lot of them, it'll take you a longer um, longer time on average to get your your Islings. So probably gonna upgrade here so I can drop. I can also interrogate. That's probably the best option. I only have one more question mark. So I'm probably gonna find it in the next uh, one or two encounters here. So it is a fair move to upgrade so I can close the house in, in two maps. Yeah, now I found everyone, and I can start building up my my scarabs here. I just upgrade Elion, upgrade Haku, and lastly release here for get some XP. Found Isling. She was in transportation. So I just jail her, so she's gonna be free. Release, and next turn. So here. I gotta make sure I do research as the last map, uh, as the last encounter next map because Eisling is gonna be in jail for the first two encounters. So in the next map, if I start on research, she'll be in jail and I would not be able to get her into research. So I gotta make sure to, uh, I start on the transportation or fortification encounter here. And because she's in jail here, I, I can't run the the safe house. She would not be eligible for becoming the new leader. Probably what I'm gonna do here. Probably thinking that I'm gonna be risking my Vodichi. I think it's... Mm, it might be worth risking the Vodichi here. But not running is also a fair move. So what I do here, I go for the run. I lose the Vorichi, maybe I should not have gone for the run. Uh, I still have uh, I don't have that much time actually. The next map I'm gonna I might gonna be getting the Iceling there and the map after that she might be three. So it could be over in like three or four maps, so getting the faster the faster mastermind is probably a it might be the best option. Upgrade so I can drop next turn and close it. building up the board. Here you want to talk to Gavikus first. Yeah. Uh, I could have interrogated here. So I would be getting 42 experience. It would be 28 plus 28, 56, and I have, yeah, I should have interrogated here, there would be free intelligence, I go for the release, small mistake there,
found the Isling. Like I said, I went for the research as the last encounter, so I had the chance of getting the Isling there, and I got it. So I cannot interrogate Corel here because that would close the house and I don't want to close the house before I get Isling 3. So I have to release here. I went for the re Okay, that was a huge mistake then. Twenty-four. Yeah, that was a mistake by me there. I should not have done that. Now the research is going to close and highly is only going to be level 2. Actually, a pretty big mistake there. The worst one I've, I've made so far in, the, in these examples here. I can see that the house closed now. So I'm going to be forced to run the house probably. Yep. So the problem is, is gonna cost me one, maybe two extra maps because I did that. That's even worse. Now I'm gonna have to close it again. So you can see how mistakes can compound pretty quickly here. Basically, I just want to close research as fast as possible. Building up my scarabs here. The order here... Does it matter? It does matter. I need to talk to Haku first. So I can get Rin in there after that. If I do Rin first and get her into intervention, Haku would not have the option for the upgrade. So the correct order here is Haku first, and then Rin will have the option for the upgrade because she's not um, in the same house as Gavikus. Haku first, yep. Now I can upgrade Rin. Now, yeah, just upgrade Riker. So here, let me go back one second. All right, so if I interrogate here, it's not gonna close the house, obviously. And then the next map, Riker would be one star and also not close the house. So the correct option is to plus one rank here, and the next map, I jail him. And that would close the house on the third map. Now I jail, and that would close on the next map. And here I'm just building up some scarabs. The last scarab, so I can just leave the map right now. This is a waste of time. I should I should just be leaving the map right now. Okay, so now I can run the safe house. Didn't get the Isling. And you can see here because I made that mistake of uh, closing the house accidentally. I had to run like four maps or something. And I was, I was like one map away from finishing up the the run. So that's one one single mistake cost me like four or five maps. So now I get the eyes. I think she was guaranteed to be here. Do it on the last encounter, of course. Great. And now it's done. I can just leave the map. And that's it. I have. I ended up getting four, uh, five scarabs because it took so long. And the Isling, no Hilock, still 14.5 um, divines here. 
selling the, the Ring Gear 45. Uh, I was buying them for 30, 37, I believe. Yeah, just run, sell the stuff. Right, that's pretty much it. So you can see here, I started, uh, it was 9.29 on the clock. I did 5 runs and I finished at uh, 10.29, so 1 hour, 1 hour, 5 runs, that's including the time for selling the services, including the time for the masterminds, the putting the maps in, looking at stuff, all in all it was 5 runs in 1 hour, and I got about 70, 72 I believe. Could have been like 82 if I had the if I found the Iceland on the first one. I'll leave my build in the description. Any build would work. You can do a you can do like a lab runner or the heist runner with high move speed. This is a frost blink guy with the cooldown reduce. It's pretty quick. It could be quicker. It could be 50% faster than this. It was about 300 days, you can build pretty much the same build for 50. But any build works. You can do low tier, you can do high tier. All you need is the, the quests. The, the Saxon is very cheap right now. I was buying them for 10 chaos per 4 uses. Both for the June and for the intelligence. But yeah, pretty good. Pretty good strat, pretty good farm. If you like uh, like strategy games, board games, card games, it's, it's kind of like you're not playing PoE, you're playing a different game. So if you like that game, uh, you're gonna like doing this. If you don't like that, if you like to just watch Netflix while you play, then you might not like it. I like it. So let me know if you guys tried this, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, if I skipped something, if I got something wrong, Leave it in the comments and I'll see you guys next video.